G'day viewers, how the devil are you? Well, today is the first install of my non-oil burning. Hope that doesn't scare all my regular viewers away. But today I'm going to be having a look at my little test and play solar panel setup. So, something a bit different. I've actually got two 250 watt panels here. Uh, I bought them off eBay, used for the princely sum of $50 each. I've just stuck them on my uh, back awning because I don't intend them to be there too long, but I just wanted to have a play and see what I could learn. They're just connected up to a cheap controller, which I'll shortly show you, but they are putting out um, pretty good power and for the conversion I have, doing very well. So I'll show you what I've got uh, set up and to say it straight off, this is not a how-to, it's just uh, what I've done. So don't get bitching and complaining about, you know, errors and that in it. I'm pretty well aware of what's wrong with it. But as I said, this is just to play and learn from. So if you know how to do it better, you produce your own video and show us. Now, as you can see, viewers, if I can hold the camera steady enough, Voltage is a little bit down, but even though it's a little bit overcast, still uh, getting some good amps there, 15.7, 16, 17 amps. So this is with two 250 panels, and as I said, a little bit overcast, there's a storm rolling in, but still making uh, good amperage. And if we can see this little one here, that's the, uh, that's the input that's from the solar panels. That'll be a little bit higher because, uh, a little bit lower amps rather, because the voltage is a little bit higher. But it flashes there and you can see we're doing three, four, well, look at that, nearly 500 watts right there. So it just depends on the, um, the shading of the panels and where the clouds are at the time. That's pushing out a nice significant 400, high 400 watts there. So that's, um, that's really good. Now just to load this up, I've got this 500 watt, watt light and you can see that LED light bar. I'm uh, growing some tomatoes there so I leave the LED lights on at night to uh, help things along a bit. I left them a bit late in the season so give them a bit of a, uh, a boost. So that's part of the load there and there's uh, the batteries just stuck down in there beside the clothes dryer nice out of the way place for them. So in true oil burner style I've done it the uh, the cheap and easy way I didn't have any of these MC4 connectors so I used some screws and uh, just put it in them so I didn't have to cut them off and I can use them later and just tap the wire on that. Now before anybody gets all excited these are uh, wired in parallel so the most you can get out of them is 37 volts so no nobody is going to get electrocuted only the stupid will carry on and pretend that they can now here you can see the junction boxes on the back of the panels each panel has two wires coming out being the positive and negative this makes it easy to daisy chain them and most of these panels these days will do up to a thousand volts some of the inverters will uh, most of them you know are happier at about a maximum of 600 and you try and keep the voltage down on a 240 volt system as we here in, have here in Oz to around about the 3 400 mark that gives you a little bit of headway without having to make the inverter do too much conversion. As it is, I'm running them again in parallel, so I'm only getting uh, a maximum of 37 volts, which is really close to 30 once you put a bit of a load on them, and then I'm running that back down through the controller to 24 volts. This is the very inelegant terminations. The two panels um, both a positive to positive and negative to negative that means they're parallel so you get the same volts at twice the amperage amperage is like the strength of the volts um, the more the more amps you have the more load you can drive at that voltage uh, from there it just goes into this little watt meter that I bought um, not ideal but it's doing the job and you know this isn't really serious so it's just playing around 
Over here I have a circuit breaker. Uh, that's just to turn the panel on and off. That's just so I can um, you know, let it load up a bit, or rather the uh, batteries drain a bit, then hit it with some real decent amps just to check what the panels will do. Again, here you might be able to see if the camera will focus. It's doing 483 watts, which is, you know, quite nice. Um, the maximum the panels will do is 500, so I'm right up there, which is, which is good, especially, you know, considering all the things that I'm doing wrong here. This is a little bit more of an overall of my setup. Uh, it's just running this little bar fridge here. I've been running that for about a week now just to play with it and it's all working pretty well. I also use this LED light here which is a, um, a high bay light and that does about 120 watt and again that's just to load the two up. I can actually run the fridge and the 500 watt floodlight on a day like this giving me uh, the sort of power that I'm getting. What I'm doing here to turn the solar power into something useful, which is 240 here in Oz, not like that weak ass 110 thing you have in America at some funny frequency, 60 hertz or something. We have real 240 volt power at 50 manly hertz. To do that, I'm using this uh, UPS, which is an APC smart UPS, oh yeah, uh, 1500. That gives us about 980 watts output. Uh, that goes, I've, I've made an external connection, which is just here, uh, which goes into the unit where the batteries used to be, hooks up on the original DC connector, and then I can run that down to my batteries. The cable I'm using is a little undersized for full power, but it's not too bad. And I've got some actual battery cables made up so it can um, really suck the juice in from, you know, a couple of meters away. Alrighty, let's have a look at the, uh, the little fridge that I'm running with all this. Okay, let's have a look at this um, little bar fridge that we've got. I don't know the size of it, it's just a small little one. And look, oh, look, there's a safety sign. Well, it's probably aimed at my next door neighbour actually because we all know what he is but you know it just goes to show just because you're mucking around with low voltage being 24 volts that doesn't mean that you can't do some damage. There's a lot of amps in those batteries and you can start a fire and barbecue yourself in no time. You know if you really want to have some fun and you're stupid enough you know connect the ends up to you know you hold one wire and piss on the other and I'm sure you know that'll give you a bit of a, uh, a tingle and liven up your day but you know if that's what your sort of thing runs to well this sign is definitely for you so there you go folks don't ever say that I'm not taking this uh, safety thing seriously well viewers Christmas and the spirit of goodwill is here again and I'd like to uh, show you something that I'd like to get my viewers behind and leverage their support on. This is my niece and her husband who were recently married and he's a software engineer. He's working on a project to help people in uh, developing countries basically to give them some electric light at night. He's trying to do this by using uh, solar panels, pretty much one between multiple houses as that's all they can afford. It's not exactly covering the place in panels so they can run the 150 inch TV or the electric foot massager. They just want something that they can see to cook their dinner and maybe for the kids to be able to uh, read their school books at night. Now, I'm not a do-gooder by any means, but I certainly appreciate those that are prepared to get up off their ass and moreover, put themselves out like uh, this pair are doing. They're uh, living overseas so they can get the support of uh, different organisations to help back this as well. And there's a few big companies that are thrown on board. Many of them, though, want to see something up and running before they will come into it. So it's up to the young bloke to uh, get this going off his own back, which is, you know, a bit of an ask. 
if you guys could go and have a look at his um, his video, uh, I'll put the link below and also the crowdfunding page. If you could certainly, you know, like it, share it around, which is really important to help get it seen. And if you uh, think it's a great idea, which I certainly do, please, by all means, make a donation. I know that would be greatly appreciated. And it's not just about you know, a couple of people, it's about all the people this will help, which could go, you know, quite a long way. Um, if you could do that, that'd be great. It's something that I think is um, very worthwhile and hopefully you do too. So get into the Christmas spirit viewers and um, let's see uh, what we can do to help out with this. Now to start at the beginning, I've got the solar panels, they feed into that controller and that comes down and charges up the batteries. There is a wire to feed into the, uh, the batteries from the controller and there's another one that's taking off and going to the inverter. Now the two batteries are in series, no, 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 that's not some kind of weird sexual freaky act thing, just, just calm down there. What it means is the two batteries are put one after the other so you get 24 volts. In actual fact a battery runs above 12 volts, that's only its basic charge, it's almost flat when it's at 12, and, uh, but you call it a 12 volt system. So they are joined together with that um, cable at the back near the round thing, which is a fuse. So from there they can be charged up and then uh, give the power back as you need it, basically. Car batteries are not good for this because they don't discharge very well. You can only discharge a car battery about 25%, so you've still got to keep about 75% in it or you damage them. To go further than that, you need to buy deep cycle batteries. But hey, they're expensive. I don't have them. I do have these, so for mucking around, perfect. That's what I'm going to use. So as you can see here, folks, I am a man of, of culture and, and, and oh, whatever crap, and I'm not just into, you know, demolition and fire and all that. This is the little setup that I've got to raise my tomato plants, which I love because tomatoes from the shops taste like crap. So I've got the light up here and, oh, oh, there's another one of our safety warnings. Whining safety sissies and environmental Nazis can bore you to death. Now, I'm sure a lot of you can relate to this. There's nothing worse than somebody pissing and moaning about safety because they haven't got the brains to look after their own welfare or they crap on about the environment. I'm fed to death with hearing about CO2 and whatever and all that garbage when everywhere I look around me, big business and governments are doing everything they can to pollute the world. So, for God's sake, you know, if you see or hear one of these safety sissies or environmental Nazis, just run, viewers, just, just run. They will ruin your day and they will get in your head and just drive you nuts. After you've heard about the tenth one, oh my God, you start turning into one of them. Don't let this happen to you. Take notice, please. Now here's one of the uh, proclivities of solar, folks. As you can see, uh, I've actually turned um, the main uh, load off the lamp uh, from the inverter and I'm still only doing 25 volts. It's come over a bit cloudy now and there you go, 3.1 amps. Now before I was doing 16, 17 amps, not 10 minutes ago, a cloud comes over and I'm only doing three. So that's the sort of thing that um, solar can do for you. Now in this sort of setup it would be classed as off-grid because it's its own generation. The solar systems you see on the roof of houses, they feed back into the, um, into the household circuit firstly, so any power that you need is used there, and then it goes back to the grid. Uh, here you only get about six cents a kilowatt hour, which is complete bullshit for what you generate, but whenever you want to take some of that power back, they'll slug you upwards of 25 cents a kilowatt. There you go, folks. There's the environmental, government conscious, 
and look at this not two minutes after that last clip and we're back up to 17 amps there's a huge variation in the output you can get on solar and you can see it happening before your eyes there um, it all depends on any shading you get or how the sun is shining and the brightest sunniest hottest days are not always the best because the hotter the panels get the less they generate so something to keep in mind look how that's falling there down to six from 17 amps just the way it goes folks um, and it's something that the people that uh, do this off-grid have got to contend with you can't have enough storage basically generation in panels these days is really cheap especially if you pick up second-hand panels but batteries are still expensive so you can either uh, feed it back to the grid and get a miserly six cents a kilowatt hour here or you can um, use it uh, yourself which is a much better way of doing it now I don't know how well this is going to work on this camera, it doesn't seem to focus real well, but everybody loves a bit of sparks and whatever, and look at that. Now this might be 24 volts, but it's running at immense amps, and as you can see, it doesn't take much to blow this bit of solder away. Now for you Americans, that's solder. It's not solder, it's solder. There's an L in it, and it's not a silent L, so best you use it. Um, that just goes to show you even though it's low voltage there's plenty of power there now you can touch it it's not going to hurt you at all it's too low anything about below about 60 70 90 volts not sure now is pretty safe but if you go shorting these things out you can easily cause a fire or hurt yourself if you, you know, put a bit of effort into it and are terminally stupid. It's not just oil that you can get into trouble with, it's all sorts of things. But, you know, the sensible ones of us amongst us already know that because we've had to endure these morons and clowns all our goddamn life. And the safety sissies, for some unknown reason, try to keep them alive. Oh, God, I don't know, really. Well, there you go, viewers. That's probably my most intelligent and sensible video ever. I hope it didn't bore you all to tears. Please let me know in the comments if you do like this and you'd like to see some more. Uh, I'd be happy to do some on um, different types of generators as well. And I'd also like to take this to the next level when I get a heap more panels and hook it up to my, um, my home and, and do a, uh, a grid uh, coupled setup like that. Thanks for watching, um, please click the like button if you did, share this round, maybe somebody else might be interested in it, and um, let me know what you think. Thanks very much for watching.